Pastor Raymond, uh, we would like to welcome you to share the word of God and pray for the Myanmar. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Yes. All right. Okay. Praise uh, God. Jesus, Robe. Yes. Um, did you? Uh, I, I, first of all, greetings, and I'm so blessed and thank you for the honor of being a part of the prayer event tonight. Jano dinya ma pia the king ye Jesus Robe to be chimane to the pin jano go akulo mu suit down dinya ma pia pia dread jano to be Jesus dinna pia pare. Tonight we are not uh, hearing about uh, or getting an answer from politicians or from economists. We have come together as children of God. And we are a people that are part of God's kingdom. So when we are in a time of conflict, when there is innumerable number of people that are suffering, when our hearts are hurting, what does the Bible tell us to do? I will start straight from the book of James, chapter 5, in verse 13. And please read James, chapter 5, verse 13. Verse 13 says, Where there is Why do we pray? What causes us to pray more? What is the reason why that there is this 21 days dedicated to pray? Here James says, when you're in pain, pray. When, when you're rejoicing, you praise. So as a child of God, we respond to our situation spiritually. As for people in the world, when they are in pain, they do different things. Without God, when you're in pain, you will get drunk. You'll cause pain for other people. You'll create problems. But as a child of God, when we are in pain, we pray. When, when people have reason to rejoice, they celebrate in a different way. They spend a lot of money. They commit sin. They commit They commit sin. But for a child of God, we learn how to praise God. Because there is, a, there is a reason from God why we are blessed, so we praise. And there is also a purpose in every pain. It brings us to prayer. And tonight I want to encourage you why we pray and we pray more. We don't want to do something that is a waste of time that produces no results. Why did God tell us to pray every time we feel pain? Why did God tell us to pray every time we feel pain? 
ဘာလို့လေဆိုစုတောင်းခြင်းဆိုတော့လူတရားကိုကျွန်တော်တို့စကားပြောတာမဟုတ်ပါဘူးဝေအာတကိုအာနာရှိဆုံးလို့တင်
It says here that he is the head over all principalities and powers. We are nothing in this world. We cannot bring even an ounce of strength to the people that are in need to be strengthened. We cannot reach them. We cannot hold their hand. We cannot carry them. We cannot go through their oppression together with them. But here the Bible tells us and when we have nothing, when we cannot do, we seem like we cannot do anything. He says that we are in him, in Christ. And he is above every power. It is not for us to respond politically. It is not for us to respond violently. We must know where is our power base. Where we are strongest, where we are most effective. It, it says everything that we do when we are in Jesus Christ. We do with success. We become effective. We reach the target. We arrive at the finish line. And everything that we want to do that we cannot. Jesus can do the impossible for us. We are nothing in front of these powerful people. Who are we in the face of an entire army? Even if it is a, just a truckload of soldiers, what can we do? If there is a collapse of the economy, what can we do to lift something up? Therefore, we have to call on and cry to God Almighty, who is above every power, every might, and every authority. Because we serve the great king. And power belongs to the kingdom of God. If we have nothing to offer, if we don't have the military might, we do not have the billions of dollars, and we don't have the 10 million people, we need to recognize what we have. Because what we have is more than all these things. If we battle correctly, if we come against these powers correctly, we are getting ready to see the victory. 
in the book of John chapter 18, Jesus was like a powerless person. Stripped everything away from him. He stood alone in the face of the greatest powers on earth in that day. It was the combining of the power of the Roman Empire and the authority and power of the Jews. And in the natural, it seemed like there was no one that was with him. He had no sword, nor had he a spear. How long could he last? What could he do? The greatest, the best, the strongest, they were all there against him. But Jesus was not operating in the realm of this world. Are we operating in the realm of this world? No wonder sometimes we feel discouraged. Sometimes we feel lost. We don't know what to do. Jesus answered Pilate. My kingdom is not of this world. For if I am, then my men would fight your soldiers. And Jesus is not afraid or intimidated by these powerful men. Because Jesus said, I am king. And I'm not talking about being king on an earthly kingdom. I'm king of the greatest kingdom. Matter of fact, I'm the king of the kingdom that is above all the kingdoms of the world. Jesus is matchless. And he says he's the head of all powers and principalities. And we are in him. And so that's why we must operate above all the kingdoms of this world. We are not of the kingdoms of this world. We are of the kingdom of Almighty God. And so therefore, we must be intensifying of what we are able to do that is most powerful and most effective. Every day when I pray for Myanmar, there is so much of news that's out there. I hear the news of, from the BBC almost every day. Al Jazeera, every news agency is available every day to report on Myanmar. You have a lot of first hand news from your friends and family that is there. Then, 
But when you receive all these news, how are we to respond to them? While you're praying, while you're calling on God, are you, are you affected by them? Are you shaken by them? Or do you understand God's kingdom? How much do you know about the king that is in his kingdom? Many people do not understand what Jesus was really teaching when he taught about prayer in Matthew chapter 6. I, I pray that this will become a very powerful key for you as you pray for our beloved nation of Myanmar. Because when you hear all kinds of news about what comes out of that land. Your emotion can go up and down. Your faith can be affected. You know, something bad happened. So many people died. All these places that got burned down. And we think that we are losing the battle. We, we think that God is retreating. Don't be affected by those news. Because God knows what he's doing. When man thinks that this is a loss, you don't know that God is winning. God is doing a lot more than our eyes can see. When it seems like it's the darkest day, you don't know if how the kingdom of God have actually advanced. I want you to listen again to Matthew chapter 6 because I know we're very familiar with it, but let's catch something here by revelation. They asked Jesus, teach us to pray. And so Jesus started to teach them. He says, every time you pray, you, you, you start by saying, Our Father who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. To start with, God wants us to think in a different direction. It says, it says, I'm not like anyone. I'm, I'm not like any human being. I'm not a created thing. I'm a, the creator. I am the creator. I am the source of everything. I'm called Father. From Him, everything begins. And He is the paramount, the supreme one above all. And He is in the heavenly place. That's who you're calling on and that's who you are crying and praying. 
দিনে মাতিন ও হে গোজুয়ে তাও সৌ নি রে দুয়া থো ফেয়াদ খেমফে বারে এন্ড দ্যাট অনার বিলংস ওনলি টু হিম এরি গোম্পু জ হা তুনে বে সাইনে দেন ভার্স 10 সেস အငယ်တစ်ဆေးမှာဒီလိုပြောတယ်ကျွန်တော်တို့အတူတကွအငယ်တစ်ဆေးကိုဖတ်ရအောင်နိုင်ငံတော်တီထောင်ပါစေတော
His kingdom and his will. He says, pray, let God's will be done. I know we want many things. We want freedom to come back. We want the pain to go away. We want a future for the people. Lure we want the glory to return back to the land. We want the people to prosper. But God says, I can do all this and more. But the most important thing of all is not what we want. He says, pray, let his will be done. Pray to ask God's will that his will will be fulfilled. That his kingdom will come in your in our land. That there will come revival in the church. That the souls will be swept into the kingdom of God. That it will not be just men doing the right thing, but the righteousness of God will reign. Even the fairest justice is not good enough compared to God's judge being just. The most loving leader. The most compassionate leader. The, the kindness and the mercy cannot be compared to God's loving kindness. And God teaches us to pray, let his kingdom come, let his will be done. Because, because in the kingdom of God is the goodness of God. Because his kingdom brings glory to his name. And no matter what is the will of man, man will still be wicked. There will always be injustice. Because man is always greedy, selfish. And they have idols in their hearts. But when it's the will of God, it causes the purpose of God for good for everyone that we will ex receive it. After this verse 10, then he says, Ask, give me, give me. But read verse 13 at the end of his teaching on prayer. Read verse 13. Because the Right at the beginning and at the end. 
Asane asoma jano rubadu ya lezo ye. You know then this is very, very important. Da yengo yeji bare niko maonmaru. You can pray whatever you pray in the middle. Then su daunje ma ale ma bhabe daun daun. But it must begin and it must end with this. Then asane asoma dilo asabi dilo somo lo bare. And everything we ask God for must be between this. Cannot be outside of the what is at the top and what is at the bottom. It must be a part of this. What do you say at the end? Again, the kingdom. He says, he says the kingdom, the power, and the glory belongs to God. And in between is give us, give us. Which means that everything that we pray, it must align with the kingdom of God. It must line up with what it is that glorifies God. And to know that it is the power of God that gives to, to us what we ask of Him. It is done by the power of God. So whatever, so whatever we are praying for the nation, and all that we are asking God for, when our is so moved by the need of the people. It must line up with God's kingdom and purpose. We have to adjust our prayer. That we seek first the kingdom of God. And everything that is right in his eyes. Then we will see God starts to answer our prayers. Many people don't understand why bad things happen. And suddenly the good times comes to an abrupt end. But when we know that God's kingdom is not like the kingdoms of this world, and that the king of the kingdom does not do things the way the kings of the earth do things. Then we will be still and know that he's God. Then we are free from all the anxieties and all the fears. And we will trust in the Lord more and be not to our own understanding. You remember in the book of Acts chapter 8. When the early church was born. The gospel began from Jerusalem. As Jesus said that this is the promise of the Father, you will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Then you will be my witnesses both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And the gospel spread in Jerusalem. It causes so much of anger and rage among the Jews. 
ไอ้ริกามายูราลูเรจูลูမျိုးเรหาอะยันไส้ซ้อเรเอวิงเกลีเดียวแอนดิคอสเพอร์ซิคิวชั่นสตาร์ทไอ้มาซาเตมิญญ
They were advancing so powerfully like nothing can stop them. So many people turned to Christ. And lives were transformed. Change began to happen in the land for good. People stopped sinning against God. People stop mistreating other people. They stop their unrighteous ways. And from hatred, they start to love. Isn't it good? Is this not what God wants? But why is it that something so terrible happened? Like God stopped all his work. You understand that if you look at things this way, you will be very discouraged. Today, when we read the Bible, and we say, wow, I, I know, now I know God is the one who does all these things. And, and I know that God is still in control and he knows what he's doing. His way to bring a greater breakthrough and a bigger blessing is very different than how we would do it. Now it is our turn. I, I still remember uh, when it was breaking news what happened to Myanmar. I, I don't know what to think. And I was in such turmoil in my heart. And I, you could feel the pain in our hearts. Now, now we can say, oh, I, I know, I know this, this is what happened in the early church. But he said, how you are thinking today about our situation now. Take a look at verse 4. In that time of such tragedy, in verse 4, there is trouble. They will never leave Jerusalem if they didn't have trouble. And the gospel will be limited. When they have become so comfortable. And when they went out. It was not to go out to look for a fortune. Or to find a better life. He says they went everywhere preaching the word. Now some of you may not have started that way when you came into the country where you are living in now. Or 
but as you receive from God over the years. You have been growing. And you're closer to God. And he has stirred up your heart by the work of his Holy Spirit. And you realize that there is a higher calling. There is a kingdom purpose. And so the earthly fortunes are not important. The ambitious pursuit is no longer important. You want to win souls and be fruitful for God. You don't know God's plan. That, that what it is that you are in your life today, you don't know that God, that it was part of God's plan for you in the beginning, before. But now you know. The same way when you look at what has happened to a beloved country, Myanmar. It's broken. It's weeping. Don't try to understand with your human mind. God knows what he's doing. Rising again. Nation of Myanmar. My dream is the rising of the kingdom of God in that land. And God is going to give you above and beyond what you can ask or think. Amen. Get into God's plan when you pray. Because even if God answers your prayer, of a return of a Myanmar that you imagine. That kingdom can still be shaken. And it will be shaken. But we have obtained a kingdom that cannot be shaken. So the Bible there says, therefore, serve God with the fear of God. Serve God. These people in the early church. No matter what around them or how it has been shaken. Their families were shaken. Their neighborhood and their village was shaken. Their church was shaken. But they went out of that place. They were never shaken. Because of the kingdom they belong. There is a kingdom prayer recorded in the book of Acts chapter 4. In Acts chapter 4, God used Peter and John to heal the lame man by Gate Beautiful. 
ဒီဘီကိမ်ဒီဝိုဘာစီဒီတယ်သူတို့ဟာအဲ့နေရာမှာမြင့်မှတ်နေဆက်ခြင်းခံရနေပေဒရူနယောဟန်အန်ဒီ
a work the way I will do it that Ma- is guaranteed to succeed. I will give them an element of surprise. I'm not responding flesh against flesh. I'm going to come to them at a way that they cannot respond except God's way. This is the answer for Myanmar. A God invasion. The Spirit of God. That is like the wind you cannot catch. The Spirit of God that no man can catch and imprison. Like John chapter 3, Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, you don't know where he's coming from and where he's heading. Jesus tells us where the Holy Spirit is at work, God's power rules and reigns. We have to understand how to pray. That when the Spirit of God moves, even the most powerful and the most prideful. Like Saul will fall to the ground and will be humbled. He says, don't think that you can bring the best, the biggest and the latest technology. It is going to be the biggest bomb. He says, I'm going to, by signs and wonders, it will be the hand of God performing miracles. Pray, I ask of you, my brothers and sisters, that a bonus will come upon the church. In the book of Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit the first time fell upon them in the upper room, Upon, upon weak men. Fearful. No direction lost. When the Holy Spirit came upon them. Bible records, you go back and read it. That it says Peter stood up with the eleven. Pedro and boldly spoke the truth. And as a result, three thousand got saved that day. Only eleven men. In the eyes of the world, they were defeated, powerless, good for nothing. They became bold. And all of them stood up together. God's people. It's about ready to change. That 
there are so many that have risen up in this time of oppression. And found the purpose for their pains. Realign their prayer into kingdom prayers. Recognize their work is the will of God to be done. Ignoring everything that the world thinks about us and judge us. But acknowledge him who is the king of the kingdom that is above all kingdoms and all powers and authorities. That apart from him, we are nothing. But in him, we are complete. That when we pray, we know God will do the rest. God will do everything that is needed to do his will. But all that we have to do is to pray that we will receive one thing called bonus. That we remain fearless all the time. That when we pray, we don't pray like people who don't know God. We do not pray in fear. We pray with bonus. For more bonus to be added. And we pray that God he will go before us. He'll do it his way. Let me pray with you. And the way that I would pray for Myanmar every day, that God will stretch forth his hand. We are the outstretched hand of God. We are wherever we are. We can't touch anyone. We cannot reach anyone. We cannot lift up anyone up. We, we can't put our hands on another hand, a link with another hand. But we can touch everyone. We can reach every place. By prayer. Father, I pray today that our thoughts will not be the man's thoughts. For your thoughts are higher than man's thoughts. Your ways are higher than man's ways. We abandon our thoughts and our ways. And we ask, let your kingdom come. And let your will be done. Your will that is so powerful. That even the will of the strongest commander. And his will falls under your feet. 
because only your will. As you said in your word, let no man says that tomorrow I will do this and I will go there. God's will is absolute. And so now in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will have your way in Myanmar. For the pains that is in our hearts, and the greater pain that is in the lives of the people. My God, your kingdom cannot be shaken. And your kingdom will overtake the kingdoms of this world. When your people make way for you. We will, begin, we will begin then to see your kingdom come. And you will be bring peace to the land. And you will bring rest to your people. And once again, you will heal the land. And you will raise up the generation again. And drive out every darkness. And light will shine. And the glory of God will fill the earth. They will know that there is a God called Jehovah. Oh, Son's name is Jesus Christ, the Savior. Who has chosen not to tabernacle in a place made by the hands of man? But to tabernacle in the hearts of mankind. Not for a short time, but for eternity. I pray that by signs and wonders and miracles, you will take over. You will reign above the powers and authorities of the day. The sovereign one creator of the heavens and the earth. Who sits upon the throne. The heavens is your throne, the earth is your footstool. You will bring everything under subjection. We worship you, O God. That we, we, we will never walk by sight, but we will live by faith. By that faith of God, even mountains shall be removed and cast into the sea. Oh, so we pray. For yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Glory. Forever. These times that we are in, they're only for a while. But your kingdom is forever. Thank you, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Along with Jesus de Mare. Thank you, Pastor Raymond. Amen. We are Thank very you. blessed. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you.